Bible come from? That's an interesting question, and truth be told, no one knows for certain where the Bible came from. There are a lot of theories about the Bible's origins, but very few facts. We can make educated guesses based on the data we find in the Bible itself and from other ancient sources, but unfortunately there's very little substantial evidence from which we can draw a conclusion. Presumably, the process of producing the Bible began when people were inspired by the Holy Spirit to say words which God had told them to say. Those words were then committed to writing by either the prophets or by somebody else. Those words were then passed on through the generations. But who collected those writings? When were those writings recognized as being authentic words of God and not perhaps false prophecies? These issues make the whole question of the Bible's origins rather complicated. Now different traditions attribute different portions of the Bible to different people. But like many traditions, these attributions are suspect. For instance, the first five books of the Old Testament are traditionally called the books of Moses. Now, the Bible never claims that Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. It's a tradition that derives from the Jewish rabbis. And when we start to examine that attribution, we realize that it's actually very unlikely that Moses could have written the contents of these five books. For instance, almost no one would argue that Moses wrote the account of his own death that appears at the end of the book of Deuteronomy. Also, it seems unlikely that Moses would have written the comment like the one that appears in Numbers chapter 12 verse 3, Moses was more humble than any man in all the earth. What kind of humble man would write that about himself? And there are some other issues, like the observation that appears in Genesis chapter 12, verse 6, and 13, verse 7, that says that the Canaanites were in the land that would later become Israel, back in the days of Abraham. The thing is, that seems to imply that the Canaanites were not in the land when the book of Genesis was written. When Moses was alive, there was no one but Canaanites in the land. And then, there's the question of language. Why is it that the Hebrew in the book of, say, Exodus or Leviticus for that matter, is so similar to the Hebrew that we find in the book of Esther, which presumably was written almost a thousand years later? Think about how much the English language has changed over a thousand years. Is it conceivable that the Hebrew language was simply frozen in time, never changing through the centuries? No, of course not. While we don't have to doubt the Bible's assertion that Moses wrote down some biblical laws and probably even some accounts of Israel's early history, there's no reason to give any credence to the tradition that Moses wrote the entire Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. So then, who did write the first five books of the Bible? The answer, simple enough, is we don't know. Portions of the scriptures undoubtedly existed from ancient times, but there's little evidence in the Old Testament historical books that indicate that anything like an authoritative Bible such as we have today was in existence in their time. Instead, it seems that the Israelites, for most of their history, were guided by various laws which were probably written down in scrolls that were sequestered away in various places. And then there were prophets and there were priests who appealed directly to the authority of the Lord instead of the authority of, say, a biblical book. It's not until the time of the governor Ezra, about 450 B.C., 800 years at least after Moses' time, that we first hear about something like an authoritative book guiding the lives of the Israelites. According to Nehemiah chapter 8, 
Ezra the priest read a book of the laws of Moses before people gathered in Jerusalem. What's more, the people in Ezra's day seemed to respond as if they had never heard these words before. The traditions had existed, but they had never been gathered together into the books of the Bible as they were in the days of Ezra. Now, once the words of Moses had been collected and standardized by being put into book form, or scrolls in those days, then the Jewish leaders began to collect the writings of other people, people that they considered to be prophets, people like Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. These prophecies had been proven true by the fact that the things that these people had predicted happened. And so, they were regarded as authentic words of God. The prophets whose words hadn't come true were ignored and probably just lost to history. Also, history books were being collected to preserve the record of Israel's past. Some of these books had been written much earlier, possibly in fragments, but now they were brought together and recognized as special scripture. By about 200 BC, we know that most of the texts that we recognize as our Old Testament were already included as some form of holy scripture. There were a few texts that people just weren't sure about. The books of Esther and Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon. The book of Daniel probably hadn't even been completed yet. Now, for the next couple hundred years before the time of Jesus, there were lots of religious texts being written by Jewish people. Some of these texts were included among the Dead Sea Scrolls, that collection of ancient Jewish manuscripts which were discovered by the Dead Sea back in 1947. Others have been preserved in translations by various Christian communities. But by 100 AD, the Jewish leaders had decided to limit what could be considered part of the canon, what could really be considered Bible and what couldn't be considered Bible. We're not really sure why they made that decision, but it could have something to do with the growth of Christianity, or it could have something to do with the use of certain scripture passages by groups like Zealots and others that were officially disapproved of by the Jewish establishment. At any rate, they came up with a rule that anything that they believed had been written after the time of Ezra could not be included in their Bible. Now, truth be told, there were probably some Old Testament books that had actually been written after Ezra's time, but the Jewish leaders based their decisions on the traditional understandings of when the books were written, not on some historical realities. So that's how the Jewish Bible came into existence. But there were some other offshoot branches of the Jews who didn't accept the idea that only books written after Ezra's time could be considered Bible. One of these offshoots was the people who followed Jesus, the Christians. Christians continued to collect books written by people that they considered to be holy or inspired by God. Most of these books were written by apostles, people who had studied with Jesus and had become leaders in the church. The writings of St. Paul, even though he had never met Jesus personally, were considered exceptionally important to the early church. Other books, which were included by the Christians in their writings, had come from associates of the apostles. During the 2nd century AD, many of these books were being gathered into collections and read in the churches. There was, generally, a widespread agreement about which books should be considered part of the Christian Bible. The debates usually circled around a few controversial books, including the book of James and the book of Revelation. But for the most part, there was remarkable agreement among the Christians about what should be considered part of the New Testament. Now, when radical fringe groups in the early church, the heretics, began to produce Bibles of their own and to distribute them in the church, 
the leaders of the church knew they had to take action. So already, by the middle of the second century AD, church leaders were producing lists of books which were to be considered holy and inspired by God. In addition to our Old Testament, these lists included some Jewish compositions that had been written after the time of Ezra, as well as, of course, the books of the New Testament that we recognize today. Over the next couple of centuries, the church continued to explore the question of what should be considered their Bible. The consensus throughout this time was impressive. The church leaders did not invent the Bible. Rather, they officially recognized the books that were being used and respected in the churches. By the 4th century AD, the debate was pretty much over. The church accepted the Bible as we know it today as its holy scripture. The debate wasn't reopened until the 16th century AD, when Protestant reformers decided that the church had erred in accepting into its Old Testament books that had been rejected by the Jewish leaders. These books, which were written after the time of Ezra, had long been a source of controversy for the church with some church fathers accepting them and other church fathers rejecting them. The Protestants dubbed these books to be Apocrypha. It comes from a Greek word which means obscure, the reason being that their origins were unknown and uncertain. And so Protestant Christians adopted a different Old Testament from the one used by their Catholic and Orthodox brothers and sisters. But in spite of these disagreements, Christians share the same New Testament, and they all agree on the authority of the 66 books that appear in the Protestant Bible.